download this from the class folder, this is going to be your dashboard, kind of like your car dashboard. It's going to help you to visualize and interpret the output from the simulation data uh, that the thermal engine uh, spits out. And there's several tabs at the bottom here that you're going to be using throughout the semester. Um, and on this first tab, it gives some instructions about how to use it. Um, in general, the red text is my instructions to you. Make sure you read that carefully. The yellow highlighted box are data that needs to be input by you. The green ones show that there's some formula that's being filled out for you. And here's a little summary of the different tabs at the bottom. I'll run you through these real quickly. The variables tab will be um, a cut and paste type tab. You're going to take variables from that are part of the output and paste them into here. The table is the same thing. It's a cut and paste kind of thing. End use is going to give you um, the uh, summary of annual end use, um, annual energy by end use. The input output summary is what you'll be concentrating on for this um, assignment, and I'll explain more about that in a bit. The input output example is just simply the input output summary, but, but populated for Worcester Room 214 as an example. The year is um, a series of annual graphs. I'll zoom out here so you can kind of see what's what's given, a series of annual graphs on the left and the right that will help you to interpret the data. And uh, these are all linked to the, the variables tab. And then the week also has a set of graphs that are line graphs that are intended to help you see the data in a little bit more detail at a smaller and a more granular level, the, the week level. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about these in a second. Later in the semester, we're going to look at renewables, including photovoltaic systems and wind turbines. And we're also going to uh, look at total energy use. And you see on this last tab a um, kind of running total of energy use by end use, both as a summary and as a uh, annual total. And we'll talk about that more. Finally, on this last tab, it's called the Viz panel, and what I've done here is set up a couple graphs. There's a, a heat map type graph, there's a line graph, and there's a second line graph. And all of the different variables that Energy Plus is going to spit out for you as part of this template file. And the way this works is if you input a variable, a number here that corresponds to the variable, so 2 is the outdoor dry bulb. Um, this graph and this one, let me zoom out here so we can see these better, will change. And, um, and so this is colored by uh, the extreme. So the, the high in this climate is 33 degrees centigrade and the low is 0, or sorry, is 0 0.75. Um, and that's how this is colored. And you can see that... Um, that those correspond, say this 33.38 is probably this value right here, which corresponds to that dark line right there. Um, so that's how that works. And then this second one is uh, this, this graph down here. So if you want to change that to look at, say, uh, wind speed, number four, I'm going to zoom back out and and this is now graphing wind speed here relative to temperature up here. So these are just meant as quick uh, visualization tools so you can investigate the data a little bit more and kind of walk through all the different variables that we're going to output. Now, this, that's kind of um, a look ahead. For this week, what I'd like you to do is concentrate on this input-output summary. And I guess I'll start in the input-output example here. It will be easier to see uh, what's going on. And for uh, this is filled out for Worcester Room 214. It starts with the building area, the total area, as opposed to the analysis area, and the area of the utility bill. And then the efficiency of your heating, cooling, and hot water systems. I'll come back to that later. 
Uh, we'll talk about that more. So we're going to skip over that for now. And then all the different model inputs. When you cook and follow a recipe, it's always a good idea to prep all the vegetables and measure out your uh, sauces ahead of time. That makes making it a lot easier. This is like prepping the recipe. So uh, before you start trying to edit things in the IDF editor, please lay out what it is that you'll be changing. And so I've got some parameters here. These are all the major parameters that you'll need to change. People, lights, equipment, process loads, hot water. Those are uh, part of the internal loads. And I'd like you to write what, the, what your case study actually is in this column here. It says actual or assumed. If you don't know, make your best guess. And then um, you'll, you'll see about these benchmark and hand calc ones in a second. But then the base case here is going to be your baseline model, and it's going to show what's different or the same between what between reality. So for instance, in this case, in reality, people are in Worcester room 214, somewhere between um, 50 people at 120 watts per person, if they're awake, um, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, more or less. In this case, what I'm saying is that we're going to model 50 people at 120 watts per person, but the building type is going to define the schedule. It's not precisely 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. There's a schedule built in to the IDF file that we're going to use. And so that's why this is highlighted in red, because that schedule is slightly different, or pretty grossly different, actually, than this here. And as you know, energy is power times time. And so time will make a big difference. What, what the importance of your energy model here is not necessarily that you are, um, are replicating reality. What you're trying to do is learn about your building and understand where the push points are. What's the sensitivity? What's going to be important to change? What will make a difference? Um, and so it is the better you can approach reality, in, you know, what's actually happening in real life, the more confidence you can have in that. But there's going to be some, some um, expedient ways of constructing the model that won't allow you to do that. And actually, the climate, as you all know already, is the first thing, because your climate is using, you're going to be using the TMY data, and that is not necessarily what any given year is going to look like, especially with climate change. Okay, so we've got people, lights, equipment, process, and hot water for the internal loads. And then we've got some envelope loads, starting with climate. So the building is located in Berkeley, but we're going to be using the Oakland TMY data. So I've uh, highlighted that in red to show that this is going to be different than that. Um, orientation, geometry, context shade, exterior shade, interior shade, the window type, exterior walls, floor, ceiling, mass, infiltration. And in this tutorial, we'll go through each of these and, and how to best approximate them. Uh, but fill this out to the best of your ability. I've also got some references here uh, that will help you if you're not sure. So SWL16 means sun, wind, and light, strategy number 16. And we'll uh, discuss those in class a little bit more. Um, when I couldn't find good references um, from sun, wind, and light, um, I've written some typical values down. For instance, infiltration, a value of 0 0.1 is extremely tight. A value of 1.0 is pretty leaky. And a typical new construction would be somewhere around 0.3 air changes per hour. So that's what I've got here. Um, and then finally, the system. So ventilation, heating, and cooling. I want you to describe your system as best you can and then um, write down here what you're inputting, and, um, and we'll, just, we'll go over that. And below all these inputs is a place to see the outputs. Um, and so these bar graphs are um, going to help you to understand how your model is performing relative to 
some of the previous work you've done. So comparing to the utility bill, the benchmark, the hand calculation, and then here's your baseline. And then you're going to be looking at a whole bunch of other parameters, which I'll describe in a second. So this graph is reading data that is input down here. So you see this as model outputs. And so you see your old friends, the different energy end uses. And there, what I'd like you to do is to input those results here. And I'll show you how to get those results. Um, there is a, a little bit, this, is, this part is relatively automated, but this part here for the utility bill, benchmark, and hand calculation, you're going to have to go in and manually input in these yellow highlighted cells the fuel and electricity from your utility bill, and then the energy use by end use uh, from your benchmark building and from your initial energy model, which I've called hand calc in this. And ultimately, what you're going to be doing is comparing these to your uh, baseline. Uh, your baseline, by the way, the reason this chart is set up this way is because these units are in kilowatt hours uh, for your entire building. These units down here are in kilowatt hours per square meter, so energy use intensity, which is what I'd like you to input here. Um, in these cases, where I've got these grayed out cells, this is all um, automated based on the formula and other data that you've input. So just paste into these cells here.